you don't really know how dead something is inside. So I know sometimes we think people have fruit in their life, but do they? Because the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, forbearance and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. And against such things, there is no law. The law of God is that he wants us to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. That's truly what he wants us to walk in. And so when we come to the Holy Spirit, first of all, you can't get saved without the Holy Ghost because it's the Holy Spirit that exposes your need for a Savior. He exposes our nature that we are sinners and we need a God. And we need a Savior to save us because we are not God and we cannot save ourselves. And it's through the Holy Spirit only that somebody can come and say, it's Jesus. Jesus is that Savior that I need, and it's, it's him. And when he comes and he transforms us, he, begin, he wants us to start growing fruit. We're, we're like a tree that's planted. And what we get close to, if we get close to the rivers of water for the Holy Spirit to move in our lives, we'll start to get fruit out of that. But that fruit should be these things, love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Self-control is a really big thing in the Bible. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. Sound mind actually means self-control. I used to tell my kids all the time, listen, patience is a fruit of the spirit. Grow it. They used to hear that a lot. <laughs> so, you know, because kids are really impatient. It's a fruit of the spirit. I didn't tell them it was a virtue. That didn't mean anything to that. It's a fruit of the spirit. Grow it. Make it come out of your life. Use it. Fear. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but he's given you self-control. You know when kids would look at you and say, I just can't control myself. I always looked at them and said, God gave you the ability to control yourself from birth. It's actually a God-given birth gift that he gives each one of us. You can have self-control. But I'm going to tell you something about self-control. Self-control is more powerful if you lean on the Holy Spirit yeah. That's right. and let him work it through you. It works a whole lot better than if you try to do your willpower. Yeah. It, it just doesn't work that way. Hollywood tries to say that willpower will overcome fear. They did a whole movie on it, and it bombed. You know why? It's false. Your willpower will not come over fear. The word of God overcomes fear. When you link yourself to God, he transforms you. And I'm going to tell you something, it's a whole lot easier because he does the work in us. And you don't have to battle and strive so hard because if, if you think you're going to do this, this life on your own and succeed, it's, you're going to be exhausted. You're just going to be exhausted. It's going to burn you out. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. That's Colossians 3, 5. Part of coming to Christ is putting to death our old nature, the old things that used to lead us the wrong way. And that is what it means to come, give yourself to Christ, and let the Holy Spirit transform your life and say, I want to change. I don't want to be the old person I used to be. Colossians 3, 9 through 10 says, Do not lie to each other, since you've been taken off your old self with its practices and have put on a new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge and in the image of its creator. Okay? We are taking off our old self and our old practices, and we're learning a new way of living. That's what it is to be transformed. So when we share the gospel with people, it's more than just Jesus died for you and he loves you. Jesus died for you so you could become new. So you could leave the old man. We, we don't like that part of the gospel. We don't want to talk about pick up your cross and follow Jesus. But that's what Jesus said. He said, pick up your cross, put down. And Paul said, Paul talked a lot about taking, dealing with your old man. You know why? Paul was the worst of sinners. He said, I'm the chief of sinners. You guys, he killed people. He killed people who served Christ. He put them in the Colosseums and they got eaten by wild animals and all sorts of different things. He did horrible things. 
He called himself the worst of sinners, and yet God changed him and transformed him. But there was a cross that he had to bear. So there's a reality of that in the gospel. So we don't just teach the gospel and say, oh, come to Jesus and everything will be pretty. Because it's not. No, there's going to be some sacrifices you're going to make. You're going to lose some friends. You're going to lose some people that don't like you because what are you doing? You're going to church on Sunday. Why aren't you going down to the beach and hanging out and partying with everybody? Why aren't you running and doing this? You know what? No, I'm not doing those things. Part of growing up, part of maturing anyway, Paul said, when I was a child, I behaved like a child. When I became a man, I put those things away. There's just a part of growing up that says, I'm going to mature. I'm, never go I'm not going to stay the 17-year-old the that wants to run around. And that doesn't make you boring. That makes you mature. It's called growing up. But it's the same way in our faith. We grow up in our faith. The, the way I acted or whatever I did, even in my young, young year, younger years, I don't act like that now. There's a maturity that has come. There's a maturity in the spirit that has come. I don't even crave that. You know, I don't crave the stuff I used to crave because I know it doesn't lead to anything good. It's kind of pointless. It's like it's beneath me. It's under my knees, okay? So part of maturity is coming to that knowledge. That's just called growing up in the faith. It's called growing up in the spirit.